Good morning. Today on Spotlight, the minister and civil rights leader who has been in charge of the Detroit branch NAACP for the last 25 years. He is also a member of the organization's National Board of Directors. Our guest, the Reverend Wendell Anthony. He'll bring us up to date on Freedom Weekend 2018 and the issues he was elected to champion. And later, Michael Williams of Orchards Children's Services and Cassandra Thomas of the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services will be here to talk about an important event coming up to help abused and neglected young people. It's Sunday, April the 29th. I'm Chuck Stokes and this is Spotlight. All right, uh, be honest with me. How many times do you wake up and you look over at Monica and say, Daggone it, we got to pack Cobo Hall one more time to keep Detroit the biggest and baddest chapter in the nation? Too often. <laughs> and it's like, um, as soon as we have one dinner, it's like, what you going to do next time? Got to top what gotta, you did last. Yeah, and, and the beauty of Detroit is that people still come there's nothing like our city, not California, not New York, not D.C., not Atlanta. I don't care where you go. Nobody produces what Detroit produces. It's something about this, this Detroit thing, this, this spirit, this, this connection with, with uh, social justice, this connection with labor, this connection with faith-based and business. It's a time when we all come together. And, and to call the Fight for Freedom Fund dinner a dinner uh, really reduces what it is. It's really an assembly of people coming together to network, uh, to program, to strategize, and to take a look at where we are as a state, a city, and a country. Uh, and to it see also, how, we, how we, what our role is in it. It's also the icing of the cake of a week long worth of activity. Absolutely. Yeah. We have Freedom Weekend, Chuck, which begins on Wednesday, May the 2nd. That's sponsored by the Freedom Institute, which I founded 14 years ago. Freedom Institute for Economic, Social Justice, and People Empowerment. We start off Wednesday with a youth career uh, summit uh, dealing with STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And we also have an expungement. Uh, piece going on the next day for workers and for people who have records. Also, we have a youth speak out. You speak out, so much going on. On Wednesday, the career summit in the evening, you speak out, ending gun violence, violence in our community. Thursday, career day summits with uh, vendors. And we had, we, we did a summit with regards to expungement. We had 1,482 people there. We're doing it again on, the th on Thursday, uh, May the 3rd. Then Friday, we have a big uh, town hall luncheon with Alan Bozak. You remember Alan Bozak yeah, yeah, was Africa. one of the anti-apartheid leaders Absolutely. who worked with uh, Nelson Mandela and Winnie Mandela, God rest her soul, who passed recently, and Bishop Desmond Tutu. He's coming back. He's speaking on from Martin uh, to Mandela, uh, where is a faith-based community? We're working with DTE on that, and DTE has been gracious, the foundation uh, in, on this matter. We're gonna be having a tribute to um, Winnie Mandela, the Renaissance choir from Cash will be singing. It's gonna be a great event. And then we're gonna do something different. Jerry Norcia is coming, who's a, a visionary at DTE, along with Jerry Anderson. He's gonna be having a personal discussion about how you can reduce your, your costs, how uh, DTE can work with the community. We're going to make it useful and functional. It's also Senior Awareness Day. Uh, seniors dealing with safety, financial literacy, and sexuality, and health care. That's going to be on Friday, May 4th. This is all Freedom Weekend. And then on Saturday, the Dr. Ron Walters National Town Hall meeting. The theme is uh, being black is not a crime. You know, um, Chuck, you and I both know that with all the stuff going on, the incidents of two brothers sitting at Starbucks Philadelphia, uh, in Philadelphia, yeah. just having uh, a conversation and being arrested, that's untenable. When was the last time some white folks were arrested at Starbucks for having a conversation? People sit in Starbucks all day with their handheld laptops, drinking water, ordering nothing, having meetings that they've not even organized because it's that kind of environment. The shooting of uh, Brian Walker as he knocked on the door 
Now in the morning, 14 year old boy trying to find help because he was lost on his way to school. Remember Renisha McBride, who was shot uh, age 19 on the porch in Dearborn Heights um, at midnight as she sought some help. Uh, Philando Castile, uh, the young man who was shot in his backyard uh, six times in his grandmama's backyard. So the fact that we find ourselves in this situation where we have policies that bespeak to the division of people means that some people are perceiving some of us with an eye that is not accurate. And so it is it's a misrepresentation, it's a lack of understanding, it's a lack of knowledge, and we're trying to bring it together. We have invited law enforcement people, folk from the media, community people to come and just talk about this and to see how we can work together to try to differentiate this. We even invited the CEO of Starbucks. I don't know if he's gonna show up or not, but we did invite him to come. And then on Sunday, uh, we uh, crystallize it, put the icing on the cake with a candle, <laughs> with the 63rd <laughs> annual Fight for Freedom Fund dinner. Uh, the stakes are too high. Uh, we cannot uh, go back. And our speaker is none other than, than Cory Booker, who was one of the stars politically in terms of his commitment, uh, his articulation, and his legislative, uh, legislative policy and, and acumen uh, in uh, our capital. So we're very excited. I do know that we need somebody who can take us out of this pit we are in. I say it's a pit because of the divisiveness, the mean-spiritedness, uh, the kind of harshness, and the kind of things that we have never seen in any president, Republican or Democrat. You cannot show me a president that has conducted himself like this guy has at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. All right, let's take a quick break. We come back, I wanna pick up on yes, that. Yes, sir. We'll be right back with Reverend Wendell Anthony, president of the Detroit branch in AACP. Stay with us. Welcome back to Spotlight. Uh, you're well steeped academically, career-wise, uh, in sociology, <laughs> theology. Um, what do you sense is happening in America right now? Why are we at this pivotal time in which people are questioning uh, the morals and the ethics? Set aside the political for a second, just the morals and the ethics uh, and how we are treating those who want to come to this country. I think it's a betrayal of the history, tradition, purpose, and the beauty of America. I say that because America has always been a nation that has welcomed the least of these. Many of us came here voluntarily. Some of us did not come here voluntarily, but we're here now. And because we are here, the country is better for that. I, I think that Martin Luther King uh, said it well when uh, he talked about so many of us, the danger, the great danger in our society today back when he was alive was that we are victims of a sincere ignorance or a conscientious stupidity. It is not racism or economic exploitation that's killing us, Chuck. It is ignorance. Racism is ignorance. Uh, conscientious discrimination is ignorance. When you do not see the value of other people simply on the basis of color or gender, you are ignorant because you are not really allowing yourself the benefits of what that individual may or may not possess within his or her own ability and talents. God made all of us uh, in one way and we all have different gifts and talents. And so when you suppress that, you suppress the ability for yourself to, to, to rise up. Racism does something to the victim and it also does something to the victimizer. Donald Trump has given those, those rare, those, those base instincts permission to rise up. He has allowed those people who've been in the corners, in the woodwork, to feel free to come out and to discriminate. When he says things like there are good people on both sides of this, when he doesn't say anything about the young man, the black man that rescued and saved lives in Tennessee at the Waffle House, uh, he didn't call him a hero, he didn't say nothing about him. 
when, when he talks about people are rapists and murderers, paint brushing them, when he talks about women, when he talks about disabled people, when he mocks them, when, when he says that people from Africa don't want to go back to the huts that they live in, they're from s-hole countries, no president has articulated that publicly like he has. And so what he has done is he's given permission to those who, that's why the Ku Klux Klan say that's our guy. That's why David Duke said that's our guy. But, so but if you, you sit in. But, but even in lieu of all those things, yes. he has a base. He no just, question. He just left here, uh, just visited Macomb County. He has a base, um, and that's unfortunate. Base, and it's not just a base in Michigan, it's a base all across this country. So as you get out, you've been very involved with yes. voting yes. and voter education mm -hmm. and voter registration. Do you sense that young people are going to galvanize and really get out and Absolutely. vote this time, regardless of who they vote for? Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm so hardened by what I see in young, young men and women, black, white, brown, yellow. The fact that they have, and we're honoring them. I'm glad you raised that. Yeah, you we did. are honoring young people who came out of their schools in protest against gun violence uh, from the Troy Public Schools and from Oak Park, I mean, from uh, uh, North Farmington, there. from Novi, right. Pershing, um, Renaissance, Cass, Western, Martin Luther King. We're going to honor them, be not because they just left school, but because they have the boldness and the insight to understand that they must be engaged, that they're, they're taking it to the next level. They're also registering young people to vote. We're going to have a thousand young people, uh, Chuck, at the dinner. Uh, and we're going, they're going to do a tribute uh, from Martin Luther King and Black Progress to Tikala the King and Black Pride. I am not pessimistic. I'm very optimistic. optimistic about what I see. Thank God for them and, and the way that they are demonstrating from Black Lives Matter to Our Lives Matter to Everybody Matters. And so if we matter, let's do something about it. All right, we need to take another break. We'll come right back right. with some final questions. Uh, and I want to talk about education. Yes, sir. And economic development. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Reverend, you are co-chair of the Coalition for Future of Detroit Children, right. very involved with education and have been for a long period of time. When you see a report that comes out that lists Detroit public schools at the bottom, this has nothing to do with Washington. This has nothing to do with the politicians of either party. Mm -hmm. This has to do with our own community. Um, what in the world are we going to do? Well, Chuck, you have to go back 16, 17 years now, almost 20 years. We've not always been here. Uh, people forget that at one time Detroit had 300,000 students. Um, now we're down to 40 something. Uh, we've had years of emergency management. We've had several. We've had surpluses. We've had um, the emphasis on African centered education. We've had uh, ch children of the 21st, we've had all kind of programs here. Uh, it is disheartening when you see that. And we need to stop experimenting with our children and using every measure that's on the national or some concept that the government, the state may have and put in our district. Um, we have not funded our schools adequately. Uh, we have uh, cut uh, teachers' salaries. Uh, teachers, which is why you see what you see all around the country, yeah, uh, which is everywhere. protesting everywhere. I'm not saying that to say that that's uh, the reason for the, the, where we are, but that has a lot to do with it. Teachers should be paid and should be paid well. Uh, programs that were extracted from the school system should never have been. I mean, the vocational tech, technical centers should not, never have been closed. They were closed, now they're coming back. The, the uh, music department should not have been uh, recessed, but now it's coming back. Dr. B says he's bringing all of that back. Uh, the physical fitness uh, should never have been uh, taken away. Now it's coming back, which is why you see so much obesity in our community. And folk and students are not moving. When I went to school, I had shop, I had to take gym. Um, I, we had all kind of, we had 
home and family living classes. Those are gone. I'm simply saying there are reasons. I'm optimistic about what I see with Dr. Vitti, the new general superintendent. Okay. I think he's bringing in some programs and structuring. I think it's too early to judge him. Oh, it's yeah. too early right now. And right. let me tell you this. I was not for him when he first came. I did a check on him. I had my folks to run a check. He was down in Florida. Right. Uh, this guy getting ready to come up here. What is he made of? And I let the board know that uh, because I wanted someone more local. Uh, but now I've gotten to know him. I've gotten to hear his concerns. I've gotten to see some of the things that he's doing. And I'm impressed so far. Economic development. Yes. Where do you sense Detroiters are right now? I like what I heard the mayor say when I've heard, I heard him say it more than one time when he said, I want to do some things not just for the people that are coming back here, but for the people who have never left. I like that. I think that's good. I think the table has to be bigger. More of us need to be at it. I, I think that one of the things that we're concerned about is that contractors, African American minority contractors, women who can do the jobs, need to have the opportunities. Companies need to make sure that when you send out contracts, that one of the things that happens is that you have somebody else that is attached to you, that you are in fact making a way for other folk to come in. You should not be able to have all the tax breaks without breaking away for others to come to the table. If you talk to many black contractors, several of them will say that they are not included. Some will say that they are, but it's not enough, uh, Chuck. I think that we can do more. We have to do more. Downtown is going to be fine. It's the neighborhoods. Yeah. And I've heard the mayor articulate his concern about the neighborhoods and, and that he is moving that direction. I believe that that is the case. Uh, I believe we need to work with the city, meaning the mayor and the city council and the downtown Detroit Development Authority, DEGC. Y'all need to come into the neighborhoods as well. Because and, and we should know right. that a lot of people may not realize that just a few weeks ago at your church, yes. uh, you worked with the Booker T. Washington Business Institute to make sure that you were matching and up people DTE there. who could do these businesses right. with the big major companies. DTE was in the suppliers. house. Uh, we had a number, we had about 200 African-American and women businesses there. We do this procurement uh, fair every year. We do it twice with DTN. Other companies need to do it. The Illiches need to do it. Uh, Dan Gibber does a lot. Uh, they can do more. Uh, all these folk with all these big companies, the, the Lions need to do it. Um, the, uh, the, the Tigers need to do it. They got these big stadiums. Do something with regards to broadening the base in terms of economic opportunity. Not for people who cannot do it, but for people who can do it. And when people talk about, we can't find none. To me, that means you ain't looking for none. If you can't find none, ask somebody. And there are people who can tell you where to go get them. That's why we do what we do, Chuck. That's why the stakes are too high. We can't turn back. That's why we have the 63rd Annual Fight for Freedom Fund. We bring them all together so they can get in the room, talk about networking, and build a net that works and one that don't have a big hole in it for everybody to fall through it. Call 313-871-2087, 313-871-2087, or go to DetroitNAACP.org, or go to FreeInstitute.org. Sign up for this week, the most exciting week in Detroit. Everything is going on. It's going to be really on point and mellow in the city of Detroit. Everybody right. come. I, I think they've gotten the message. <laughs> Reverend Anthony, thank you so much thank for you, coming Chuck. in. Appreciate Best of luck with uh, Freedom Weekend and thank with you. the dinner on Sunday as well. Thank you, sir. All right. And coming up, we'll sit down with Michael Williams and Cassandra Thomas. They'll be talking about how they are helping Michigan kids in foster care. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Spotlight. Joining me now is Michael Williams and Cassandra Thomas. And um, they work very closely with trying to help young kids in our society and make sure that they are getting the love and the attention that they so rightfully deserve. Welcome to Spotlight. It's Thank great you. to be here. It's good having both of you. Uh, Michael, let me start with you. You've got a big event coming up this Saturday. What is it in What's the purpose? Well, it's a celebration, celebration of the success of our children mainly, but it's, it's the people that, that, that make us attain a childhood. So it's called our Champions for Children event, uh, and it's named after Jerry L. Levin, who was one of the founders. But we recognize individuals who have went way above and beyond 
the, norm, the normal way of, of helping the community. We've got individuals who have helped our scholarship, uh, our scholarship fund. We're one of the few organizations that says parenting is a key to the success of a child. So it's going to actually one of our former, former students who has went on to do great things as a parent and as a professional. So we'll be recognizing him. We've got an advocate award and, 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 a, and a corporation award. So those are really key components because sometimes, you know, we all went to see the movie Hidden Figures. Yes. We want to make sure that the people that aren't hidden anymore that are doing things on the behalf of children and families. About how many of our young people are in foster care? Um, statewide, currently, we have um, about 13,000 children that are in foster care. Right. Um, Is that on the state. increase or decrease from um, where we were, say, roughly 10 years ago? Um, fortunately for us, that is on the decrease. Well, fortunately for our families and children that we're working with, that is on the decrease. So we're making progress. We are making some progress. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest hurdle you have to overcome? Um, in terms of working with the families, just really making sure that our children are being returned to a safe and um, comfortable environment. Um, and from the aspects of recruiting foster homes, just continuing our work to recruit quality foster homes that can provide nurturing um, and safety um, to the children until they're able to be reunified with the families. We would encourage anyone to go to the website. Uh, tickets are available at orchards.org. We, we want everyone in this community, we want it to look like the community. We want everyone that lives in this community can be a part of making a, being a champion. Yeah. And final question, uh, you need volunteers to make organizations like this work. Um, what's the reward for them? I, I think everyone has to measure that on their own, but uh, I, typically the reward is making a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, we can purchase things, you know, you go on the line and Amazon and click the button and it says, thank you for your purchase. Well, these, to, to hear our kids say, that. Why are you on TV? And why, why is Chuck Stokes interested? That is the value add that we have, that we provide a voice. And so the, the key is you have to measure. And when people say, what can I do to help? I would say anything that you need as a child, these kids okay. need that and more. So whether it's uh, your time, your talent, or your treasure, we, we need that to make sure the kids have a whole life. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. We need now to raise the village so that the children can be taken care of. And that's our job. And if I could, I would just yes, add that ahead. as a part of that village, this is where we do, you know, our pitch for recruitment for, you know, foster families that are willing to continue to assist us in providing that work. Um, those that are interested in being a foster parent can um, go to our website and be able to provide, obtain some additional information. Um, the website is www.michigan.gov slash hope for a home. Um, and through that website or our contact number, 855-MICHKIDS, M-I-C-H-K-I-D-S, they'll be able to contact the state of Michigan or any of our other private agencies um, and they'll be able to get some additional information about how they can continue to help us support that village and provide what we need for the children in care. Excellent. Again, you can contact Orchards at 248-258-0440. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm Chuck Stokes. We'll be back next week with more Newsmakers in the Spotlight. We hope you have a great week. Mm -hmm.